Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Boston Red Sox versus the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Red Sox today is Dick Ellsworth, whose record is 4-13 with a 5-26 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is Jerry Stevenson, whose record is 5-3 with a 3-70 ERA. Okay, we are on a heck of a roll right now. We've won four in a row. And uh, interestingly enough, we've really closed the gap on our run differential. Uh, it's only two, uh, negative two runs right now. So if things go our way here in these final two... Uh, actually, I, I should say there's three games, right? Yeah, there is a game on August 1st. So this, this is a four-game series versus Boston. So I would like to think that by the time we finish off uh, the last place Red Sox, we very well could have a positive run differential. Not that it means it, you know, all that much, but it does show some improvement that we've had here in the month of July where we have a 13-9 and record. So um, things are going well as we approach the end of July and the uh, trade deadline, which is on the 31st. So as I stated before, I don't, foresee us doing any last minute deals there's nobody on this team that is trade worthy i don't think um it's not like we have a bunch of players uh that have contracts that are ending um that we can afford to trade for prospects uh, because that's all we, we would be doing at this point uh in our first year of the sim we're trying to build for the future um like Jerry Stevenson, who's pitching today, as you can see, his uh, contract is expiring. I think it's um, actually it's his uh, yeah arbitration at the end of the year. So we're going to end up paying a bunch of arbitration eligible uh, players at the end of this year. Um, but we will be expanding our stadium seating, and so our revenue will be higher, um, and we can afford to keep some of the players. Uh, that are arbitration eligible instead of signing and trading them, which also could be an option. So, I, you know, we'll just have to see how it plays out here um, the rest of the year. Um, nonetheless, we have these two games left for this month. We have the trade deadline, and after uh, the 31st is over, instead of doing a, a league leaders and standings video, uh, we're going to take a look back at uh, all of the trades that have occurred uh, this year and see how the players are doing on their new teams. I think that would be fun. So we have that to look forward to. Okay, let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I, I wanna mention, um, Don T made a really great suggestion. One that I hadn't truly considered. Obviously most teams during this era only went with a four-man rotation and we've been going with a five-man rotation because our pitchers by and large do not have the uh, rating to go more than five innings six at the max and he got me thinking uh when he mentioned in the comments of yesterday's video uh, about possibly going to a four-man rotation and i thought it through and i think you know what that is actually a really great idea we're going to go with a four-man rotation uh, Dick Bates, who we just brought up for I have to laugh every time I say his name. Um, every time uh, uh, we get to the fifth man in the rotation, I mean, do we want Dick Bates to pitch? No. So let's just stick with these four guys who we know can give us four or five innings uh, as a starter, and then we can use Bates and Ramos. Um, I guess technically John Morris in multiple innings so that means they may have they may have to take in a bat occasionally as a, a relief pitcher but you know our bullpen is strong we're going to get rid of riddleberger here momentarily uh when ron Locke comes back in three games or two games um, and our bullpen is just so good uh there's we may as well utilize them in multiple inning situations it's been working so far i mean we are already doing that so Here's our lineup versus the left-hander Dick Ellsworth. It's our um, uh, our lefty-righty matchup versus lefties. So 
Uh, all of our right-handed batters are in the lineup today. Okay, let's take a look at the lineup rundown for the Boston Red Sox. Batting leadoff, playing right field, is Reggie Smith. Batting second at third base is Carmen Vanzone. Batting third in left field is Carl Yastrzemski. Batting cleanup, playing center field, is Don Locke. Batting fifth at first base is George Scott. Batting sixth at second base is Dalton Jones. Batting seventh and catching is Tom Satriano. Batting eighth at shortstop is Luis Alvarado. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Dick Ellsworth. Okay, we've got Jerry Stevenson on the mound. He's making his 12th start this year. Five and three with a 370 ERA. 93 strikeouts in 99 and two-third innings pitch. That is amazing. By the time, assuming he does not get injured, by the time Brabender comes back from injury, Stevenson will have the most strikeouts on the team. Uh, Opponents are betting 224 against him, 93 mile an hour fastball, uh, but his screwball is his best pitch, overall at 82. The 25 year old lefty, as we just mentioned, is arbitration eligible at the end of the year. Look at his log. You'll see that he got the win in his last start uh, versus Kansas City. We took him out after six, primarily because he'd walked four. Um, and his pitch count, um, well, technically, is the highest pitch count he had all year. Um, but he got the victory. And actually, if you take a look here, he has not given up more than three runs uh, in his last five starts. So he's had a good streak for us. Let's see if we can keep it going today. Here is our defense today. We are terrible at first, second, and behind the plate. Everybody else is pretty solid. And uh, if we have the lead going into the uh, latter innings, we'll go ahead and take um, these two guys out, bring our defensive replace replacements in. <clears throat> okay, let's get the game started. Here is Reggie Smith leading off, and he walks the leadoff batter. Oh my gosh, that is about uh, as bad of a way you could start off a game. Walk the leadoff guy at a full count. Carmen Fanzone up. He's a 247 hitter, six home runs. And he comes back with another full count. Line drive into center field, and it's a base hit as it falls in front of Bosch. So we are already... Uh, in a bad situation here. First and second. Nobody out. Now, again, Stevenson just threw a six shutout innings. So this is maybe going to be the game getting even as he gives up you know, a big home run here. Um, trying to even out his ERA. That's a ground ball up the middle. That could be two. It is a double play. There we go. Turning a negative into a positive, and we have a chance here to get <clears throat> to get out of this jam. Don Locke at the plate. Don't forget Jerry Stevenson, as you can see here, was on the Red Sox uh, at the beginning of the year. I think we got him in spring training, actually. And there's a ground ball to short. Patek making the play. So we dig ourselves out of that hole. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the lineup rundown for the Seattle Pilots. Batting leadoff today, playing second base, is Gary Sutherland. Batting second in left field is Lou Pinella. Batting third and catching is Jerry McNerty. Batting cleanup, playing first base, is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in right field is Tommy Agee. Batting sixth in center field is Don Bosch. Batting seventh at third base is Don Kessinger. Batting eighth at shortstop is Freddie Patek. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Jerry Stevenson. Let's take a look at Dick Ellsworth. He is not doing so well. What an odd pitcher. If you look at his record here, he was a 500 pitcher for the Cubbies. Then he went 8 and 22, sub 4 ERA. Then he went back to 500 pitcher. And then he goes to Boston and crushes it, going 16 and 7 in the 1968 season, the year of the pitcher. And then he comes back this year and is 4 and 13 with a 5.26 ERA. Uh, these are all terrible marks. He's got 82 strikeouts, 
in 142 innings pitched, but he does not walk many batters. Opponents are betting 315 against him. No complete games? How is that possible? With baseball mogul, every pitcher's potentially throwing a complete game every uh, time out. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. He doesn't have any pitches above league average. His best is a sinking fastball. Overall, 77. The 29-year-old lefty is a free agent at the end of the year. All right. There's the defense for the Red Sox today. They are lacking at first and third. Otherwise, pretty good, especially up the middle. Here is Gary Sutherland leading off. He crushes the lefties. That's why he's in there. And a base hit over the head of the third baseman. The left fielder, Yastrzemski, gets it in quickly. So Sutherland held to a single. That's going to bring up Lou Pinella. We're going to hit and run. Pinella had a pretty good game yesterday with a double, drove in a run. And another double into the gap in left center field. Sutherland scores from first, and it's 1-0 after two batters. That is Pinella's fifth double, 26th overall between Kansas City and Seattle. And we are on top. Good job. Okay, now we've got Jerry McNerty up, runner in scoring position. McNerty hits left as well. Deep fly ball to center field. Pinella should tag here. Um, oh, wow. Don Locke, an 85 arm, but he's 311 feet away. I think we got to take the chance. He is safe at third. Oh, man. I really kind of thought he was going to be out. All right. Good job by Pinella, tagging and advancing. One down, runner on third. We will request a sack fly from Darren Johnson. Johnson's been doing everything right lately. Average up to 278. I would not be surprised here if he got a base hit. Oh, no, 2-2 two -two count. Ground ball into the hole at short. Pinella does score. Give Johnson the RBI. And it's 2-0 Seattle. All right. Looking good. Two down. AG up. Sitting on 17 home runs this year. And he flies out to deep right center. We go to the top of the second inning. Up a couple. Here is George Scott leading off. Scott Jones and Satriano. George Scott popping it up on the infield, carrying to the outfield grass in the right field. One down. Sutherland making the catch. Up next is the second baseman, Dalton Jones. He strikes out a check swing, I guess. That is out number two. First K for Stevenson. And Tom Satriano. Now, I looked to see who the backup catcher is. It is Carlton Fisk. But we're in 1969. Carlton Fisk was not a rookie until 1972. So he is on the roster, but he's not the everyday starter. He's only 21 at this point. Satriano lines out to center. Bosch making the catch. We go to the bottom of the second. A nice 1-2-3 inning. Here is Don Bosch leading off. Bosch, 243 hitter, six home runs. A slow roller to short. Is that an infield single? It is an infield single. So now we have the leadoff man on uh, in both innings so far. And Don Kessinger up. Kessinger, his hit streak came to an end yesterday. I think we'll hit and run with him. He's got a, an 80 contact and Bosch has good speed 0-1 count to Kessinger and a base hit into right field we'll get a fresh hit streak going today first and third nobody out and Freddie the flea Patek up his average is up to 252 what is he batting in his last uh, 20 games he's batting 301 look at that that guy is crushing it 751 OPS. Um, we will go on contact. First and third. One out. One-two count. 
Brown ball to third. Is Bosch going home? He is, and he scores. The only play was getting the speedy Patek at first. Give him an RBI, and it's 3-0 Seattle. Okay, let's see if Stevenson can lay down a bunt, get Kessinger to third. They're playing back for some reason. Kessinger gets a great bunt down to first. I mean, uh, Stevenson does, and Kessinger goes to third. Let's see if Sutherland can drive in the run. He started the game off with a base hit. 0-1 count to Sutherland. And a comebacker to Ellsworth. And that is out number three. So we go to the top of the third. 3-0 Seattle. All right. Luis Alvarado. I Maybe I've mentioned this before. I can't remember. But this baseball card of Alvarado's is one that I've always hated. I remember having multiple versions of this card as a kid, um, you know, picking up random cards at you know, garage sales. I always hated this card because of the horrible um, the paint job that they did out here. Uh, I really, really have always disliked that card. I don't, it actually triggers me whenever I see it. And now he's got a base hit. That makes it that much worse. Second hit and an error by Tommy Ag. How can Ag be that bad? And how many errors does he have out there? Look at that. His percentage in right field is 889. Uh, fielding. Yeah, he's got two errors in right, one in left, and five in center. And negative range and negative war. Um except for in left field. So, yeah, he is just a terrible, terrible defender. I mean, his fielding is a 65, but his range is great. He'll get to it, but he just might drop it every time. So, we have a runner in scoring position. We're going to pull the corners in because the pitcher, Ellsworth, is up. Full count to Ellsworth. And he was swinging. He took a full swing, full count. <laughs> I mean, he should have just been taking a, a walk there. We'll take the strikeout. It's 2K for Stevenson. We are back to the top of the lineup. This is where it gets a little sticky with the Red Jay Smith up. And there's the first run for Boston. 3 to 1. Seattle with Smith on first. Um, I would be sending him here. Let's see if he's going to be going. Another full count. And a strikeout by Stevenson. He's up to 48 pitches here in the third. Two down. Here is Yaz. Yaz, one for two in his career. Oh, two count. And a roller to short. And that'll do it. A little bit of a delay going here. I don't know if that transfers over to the game or not, but if you hear me uh, pause, it's because I'm waiting for something to happen. We go to the bottom of the third as the Red Sox get on the board. We're up two, and Lou Pinello leading off. He had that double in the first inning, drove in a run, and we're going to give him another double. This guy is a doubles machine. I don't know why I'm checking. We know it's his sixth and 27th overall. So, we've got the leadoff man on again. Let's see if McNerty can move him along. Try to have him hit to the right side. Full count to McNerty. Oh, he gets a job done. And one better. He gets a base hit to right. Pinella's going to have to hold. It says it only went 25 feet. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's accurate. Okay, um, we're going to have go on contact with Darren Johnson up. 2-2 two, two count. Well, he did make contact. Will that be deep enough to score Pinella? 300 feet to Pinella tags and scores on his own. It is 4-1. to one. We get that run back. Nicely done. Here's Tommy Agee, whose error put Alvarado in scoring position. A ground ball to third. Could that be around the horn? 
Nope. They get the force at second. With the catcher running. Could not double up the speedy AG. So, two down, a runner on first. Here is Don Bosch. Bosch had a hit. First time up. And he goes down and gets that one. Drives it into right field. AG goes to third. That's seven hits. Versus Dick Ellsworth. Ellsworth, no strikeouts, no walks so far. But he's given up the hits. Okay, here's Kessinger. He had a base hit. First time up. Full count to Kessinger. And he walks. The bases are loaded for Freddie Patek. Patek has been on fire. Let's see if he can drive in a couple here with a base hit. Oh, an infield single. That's a cheap shot. That's like a donkey kick or a, what do you call it? A rabbit punch. <laughs> That's what it is. We'll take it. It's 5-1. And the pitcher, Jerry Stevenson, up. We're going to let him swing away. He's batting 0-50. And a ground ball to third. He made contact. Oh, it's an error by the third baseman fan zone. Oh, man. Well, we definitely made up our run differential. It's 6-1, to one, and we're back to the top of the lineup. Ellsworth getting taken out behind the woodshed. Let's see if Sutherland can add to his demise. Base head in the center field. Two runs will score. It is eight. Oh, nope. It's seven. Patek is thrown out. Ah, craptacular. That sucks. Well, we called our shot, and we were wrong. We do put up four runs. We've had a lot of big innings. Big streak. We go to the top of the fourth. Now the question will be, can we get Jerry Stevenson to five innings? That would be nice. Here's Don Locke. Full count. Okay. That was a strikeout. It looked like it was below the uh, pitch tracks there, but uh, we'll take the K. That's his fourth strikeout today. George Scott up next. Scott's got a 1-2 count. Ground ball to second. Out number two. Here come the lefties. Two down, Stalton Jones. 3-1 count. Ooh, that looked like ball four, but he got a hold of it. He gets a base hit to left. Four hits now for the Red Sox. Here is the catcher, Satriano. And he strikes out. Five Ks. For Stevenson, we're going to the bottom of the fourth. Let's get Lou back up there. Lou has a couple hits in his career now versus Ellsworth. And he's going to dump another one into left center field. Little duck start. Base hit. He almost had his third double. If, it, if they would have asked me if he wanted to go to third, I would have sent him up six runs. Try to get a three double day. Stay out of the double play. Now, I could bunt here with McNerty, but we're up six runs in the fourth. Uh, we're going to let McNerty take a cut, but this is the double play waiting to happen. These are not two guys I should have back-to-back. -back. Oh, it's a base hit past fan zone. Wow, he's a terrible, terrible third baseman. McNerty gets a double as Pinella goes to third. Seven doubles for McNerty. He's been very solid for a guy who is such a poorly rated baseball mogulian. Okay, f second and third. Darren Johnson up. Let's see if we can get a couple more here. 2-2 two -two count. Brown ball to second. Pinella scores, and it's 8-1. to one. Now, I didn't set it to uh, go on contact. So I guess technically he could have been out of the plate. Uh, but we'll take it. Now we will go on contact with a slow runner. And Tommy AG up. 2-2 two -two count. AG. A comebacker to Ellsworth. McNerty is out at the plate. Uh, 
I'm not sure about that. And Bosch strikes out. There's the first K for Ellsworth. Okay, we're going to the fifth inning. It's uh, Jerry Stevenson coming back to the mound. He's got 76 pitches. Uh, the bottom of the lineup. I mean, in theory, he should be able to get through this. We'll find out. Here we go. 1-1 one, one count to Alvarado. Is that going to fall in for a single? Yep. Damn it. The fifth inning, they always tear us a new one. Um, corners, well... We'll pull the third baseman in. Why would he be bunting down s seven runs? I don't know. But in fact, why would he not be pinch hit for? That makes no sense. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. And he strikes out anyway. You're down seven runs. Do you not want to win? Okay. So, runner on first. One down. Here's Reggie. Full count to Reggie. Oh, they're not going to give him a chance. They're not going to give him a chance. 92 pitches. Here's fan zone. One swing can uh, make it a little more interesting. Oh, son of a bitch. I mean, I mean, it's ruining a perfectly good game by Stevenson. But we know that these pitchers are not either. It's their rating that doesn't allow them to get through five or it's a built-in fail-safe in games where we're up multiple runs that the pitcher has to get crushed in the fifth inning it's happened so often it's hard to um, look the other way when when these situations arrive we're going to play back we're up seven runs maybe we get a double play slow runner at first and Yaz never had speed 2-0 count Ground ball, base hit, past the first baseman. How many score? Two. And now it's eight to three. We've got these two righties and then the lefty. So if he can't get out of this, um, then there's really nothing we can do. We're going to have to give it a shot here. 1 0 count to lock. Ground ball to first, fan zone. A hole. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Like, in, in real baseball, if it was a ground ball to first, fan zone would have been going no matter what, and we would have given that up anyway. Like, that run doesn't really much matter. Now, unless the game is trying to give George Scott two RBIs here with the hit, that is a possibility. Stevenson over the century mark here. Let's see what happens. First pitch swinging. Ground ball to second. Sutherland makes the play. So, it was predestined for him to give up three runs, and that's probably all it's going to be for him today. The pitcher spot is due up. They're setting Dick Ellsworth back out. Here is Kessinger. 3-1 count. Ground ball to short. One down. Freddy Patek up next. Patek popping it up. Out number two, and Stevenson coming out of the ball game. Uh, let's um, we'll let Jose Vidal get an opportunity here. He is why is it going so slow? Come on, he's 0 for five on the year, all pinch hit opportunities. I can't imagine playing him in the field on purpose. Two two count. Oh, he goes down and gets one. There's his first hit. The pinch hitter all, almost always gets a hit. 12 hits now for the Pilots. And we're back to the top of the lineup. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Sutherland, 2 for 3 already with an RBI. He just absolutely crushes lefties. 1-0 count. Give him another. Base hit into right field. Vidal. Wants to stretch it to three, but that would be a for sure out. Keep in mind, we've had two, what we've had two runners out at the plate today too. Okay, now Sweet Lou's up. Lou is three for three with a ribby, two doubles. And a base hit to center field. 
He is now four for four. Why is this guy not running? He didn't go first to third. He's not going to score? There we go. Come on, Vidal. Get your head out of your ass. Here comes Gary Roggenberg. Roggenberg? Let's take a look at him. Uh, he was out of baseball by 1969 in real life. Uh, he's making his 30th appearance. 1-1, one one, 496 ERA, 25K in 32 and 2 thirds. Opponents are betting 269. No saves, one bluey. Fastball tops out at 90. And his best pitch is the fastball at a 79 rating. Overall 75 to 29 year old lefty. Arbitration eligible at the end of the year. Okay. So they take out a lefty and replace him with a lefty. That's dumb. McNerty hits lefties well, so we'll take it. It's 9-3 to three now. And McNerty hits a slow roller to third. Fan zone steps on the bag at third. Getting the force. Um, we are going to change pitchers. We are not going to bring in Riddleberger. We'll bring in John Morris. J-Mo. <coughs> Making his 21st appearance. Numbers are pretty solid. He does have more walks than strikeouts, which is bad. Um, his fastball is rated in 84. The 27-year-old lefty is arbitration eligible after two more years. So we just need him to give us one inning here. Got a couple lefties up. I'm not going to do defensive replacements yet. We could because we're up six runs. I mean, um, but I think we'll try to get through one more here. Try to give some of our key batters one more at bat. Here's Dalton Jones leading off against John Morris. A comebacker to Morris. One down as Morris underhands it to first. Here's Satriano. A ground ball to short. Patek. Out number two. That will bring up Luis Alvarado. He's two for two today. The only guy that really brought his bat. Fly ball to left. And a nice one, two, three inning for John Morris. We go to the bottom of the six. Roggenberg. Coming back out. Here's Darren Johnson. Johnson's got three RBI despite not having a hit until just now. How often do you see that? He was 0 for 2 with three RBI. That guy is making his plate appearances count. He gets his first hit. 15 hits now for Seattle. AG up and a base hit for AG. Unbelievable. Why the hell did they bring another lefty in? So, as you can see here, everybody in the lineup has a base hit. Let's see if Bosch can keep it rolling here. Nine runs in, 16 hits, and a walk. And bases are loaded for Don Kessinger. Let's see. We, I mean, we'll just take a cut. What else can we do? Full count. Off the end of the bat into shallow center field. Not deep enough. One down. Okay, let's see if Patek can take advantage of it. it he's got two RBI today. 0-1 count. Fly ball to left. That should score Johnson. We're going to send him. Yes, he does score. Three RBIs now for Patek. AG goes to third. And it's 10-3. to three. Seattle. And John Morris is up in the lineup. We will take out J-Mo and bring in Wayne Comer. There's Wayne Comer for you. Got the brush top haircut. First and third, two down. And Comer with a 2-1 count. Goes to right, get down. It's a base hit for Comer. AG scores. Bosch goes to third. And the route is on, folks. It's 11-3. to three. All the pinch hitters are getting hits because that's what happens in this game. And we're back to Sutherland, who's 3-4. for four. 
Sutherland. A high fly ball to left field for out number three. We put two more on the board. We will bring in... Wait, no, Comer... No, we're good on we're good in the outfield. So we're gonna go we're gonna take a look at our defense here. And uh, we're gonna bring Mike Hegan in. At first, we will bring in Van Kelly at second. That sures up our D. Get some of the uh, familiar faces into the ball game in a blowout. We still got Pepitone to come off the bench. Time for a new pitcher. And we're going to go with Skippy Lockwood. And Skippy Lockwood has been good, been really good. 1-0 with an 072 ERA, 24 strikeouts and 25 innings pitched. That's all you need to know. It's a blowout. Now, I guess he's technically due to get blowed up. They're going to bring in someone named Chris Coletta. He's anonymous. We do not even have a card of him. If anybody can fry, find a Chris Coletta image, I will definitely use it. Here we go. Coletta. High fly ball to center field. Bosch going back, making the catch for out number one. Back to the top of the lineup with Reggie Smith. He's one for one today. Ground ball to first. Hegan in for defensive replacement. Makes the play. Two down. And Carmen Fanzone strikes out. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. New pitcher, it's Ron Klein, who we just obliterated yesterday. Look at his log already. He went one-third of an inning, giving up four runs on seven hits. There was a home run. That was by Van Kelly. And he took the loss. And I don't mind adding to his pain. Here's a Lou Pinella. He's four for four. Two RBI. Three one count. He's going for it. Oh, it's going to be caught in right center field. I thought he was going to get another. I don't know. When was the last time we've had a five hit game from, from someone? I can't remember. If ever. McNerdy pops up. Ron Klein coming out, throwing strikes. Let's see if Hegan can get something going. Full count to Hegan. And a base hit to left field. He's one for one today. 18 hits now. And Tommy Ag with two down runners at first. A ground ball to second. Moving on to the eighth inning. Um, okay, we're going to bring in Diego Segui. It's been a while, I think, I feel like, since we've seen Diego. All right, there he is. He's thrown 53 and two-third innings, all in relief. Um, and he's got a higher endurance, so he can throw more innings, but I think we've, I feel like we've already kind of taxed him a little too much his numbers are good and I wouldn't mind having having him go two today closing this baby out we'll see here's Carl Yastrzemski one for three two RBI today and he strikes out to lead off the eighth one down here's Don Locke and oh, it's the old strikeout walk combo I feel like that's the first time it's happened today though let's see if we can turn two with George Scott up a ground ball to first. This is the time to do it. Yes. Oh, no. Get the force. Good play by Keegan to pivot and get the lead runner. Let's see if we can get Dalton Jones here. Jones one for three today. Ground ball up the middle. Patek. Making the play. Sound defense today. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Don Bosch up. Bosch, two for three. He's also walked. One for one and two today, and he strikes out. Ron Klein looking good. Here's Kessinger, one for three. 
High fly ball to center. Two down. And it's up to Freddie Patek to keep things going. Yes, he does. Base hit to center. Oh, that's going to bring up Sagi. Well, look, we want Sagi in the game. We want him to close it out. We don't want to bring in Marshall or uh, Riddleberger. So we're going to let Sagi take a at bat here. It's his first at bat of the year. And well, he makes contact. Ground ball to short. And an error. Yes, right. You put it in play. You never know what will happen. And the shortstop, Alvarado, boots it. So Van Kelly will get his first at bat. He's the one that hit the home run versus Ron Klein yesterday. Let's see how he does. One, two count. And a slow roller down to first. And that will polish off the inning. We're going to the ninth inning. Three outs away from our fifth win in a row. It's the bottom third of the lineup. Catcher Satriano leading off with a base hit to right. It never is easy. Satriano on first. With Luis Alvarado coming up. And another hit. Oh, that was a ground ball in the hole. It's short. And Patek makes the play. He turns two. Oh, my gosh. That I did not sense was going to happen there. Uh, Tony Canigliaro coming off the bench. Like the, one of the best hitters for Boston in this era. And he's a bench player. And he strikes out to end the ballgame. Pilots win 11-3. This game was over early. Handshakes, butt slaps, slappy stakes. And look at that positive run differential. You got to love that. I wonder if there were any trades today. We'll find out. Take a look at the standings. Oh, well, the National League pops up first. Um, <laughs> San Diego at 27 wins. There's our five-game winning streak. We're not really closing up the gap much here. Um, we are now four games back of Oakland. Let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. 5-3 win puts Baltimore back in first. They beat the Sulks. Orioles number three hitter Joe Torre had two hits. And Dave McNally went eight and two-thirds. All right. Uh, Catfish Hunter cruises to a two-to-one victory over the Royals. Uh, and things happened in the baseball game. Here we go. Lou Pinella, four hits in an 11-to-3 route. Um, Patek had a couple of hits. Patek had the three RBIs. I wonder who the player of the game should be. We'll see here. Let's take a look at transactions. Were there any trades today? No. In fact, uh, Roberto Clemente had a milestone. He got his 2,500th hit. In fact, he's got 2,501. What a great career and a great person. And, uh, you know, what else can you say about that? But uh, Pittsburgh, I think they're in first place, aren't they? Let's take a look at the standings of the National League. No, they fall into second place now. Uh, tied with St. Louis, two back of the Metropolitans. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. A lot of uh, fun things coming down the road here uh, this upcoming week. Uh, there'll be more uh, card videos. And don't forget, tomorrow we have the uh, end of the month trade deadline video where we take a look back at the trades from this year and how players are doing on their new teams. We have to give it to Lou Pinella. I mean, four hits, two doubles, two ribbies. I mean, Johnson had more RBIs and so did Patek, technically, but uh, we're going to give it to Lou. Great job by Lou. Um, Jerry Stevenson gets the win. He's 6-3. and three. He went the minimum five. That's all we really need. We put our schlubs in there in the bullpen, and they did the job. They did a really good gerb. Four walks and nine strikeouts for the team. Not much to be said for Dick Ellsworth, who is now 4-14 four and 14 on the year. So that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow and polish off the month of July. Until then, everyone, have a great day.